machines do not need to have motors to be called machines. In fact, a machine is any device that transmits or modifies force. Simple machines We have the lever, inclined plane, wedge, pulley, wheel and axle, and screw. But, we will only discuss the simple machine lever. But before that, let's talk about the difference between a simple machine and a compound machine. When we say simple machine, it's a mechanical device that are used to make work easier, while a compound machine is the combination of two or more simple machines. A lever is made out of a beam, a fulcrum, and on top of the fulcrum is the pivot point or a torque. All simple machines have two sides, an input side where we put on force and an output side where the force comes out of the machine or the location of the load. It's also called as the force resistance. Also, to identify simple machine, they do work in one motion. When an effort is applied to one end of the lever and a load is applied at the other end of the lever, this will move a mass upward. So when you push down on one side of the beam with a force, you can lift the weight on the other side. Levers rely on torque for their operation. This is located on top of the fulcrum where when enough force is applied, you are able to cause an object to rotate around its axis. Torque is a measure of the amount of rotation caused by a force applied to a distance from a central axis or the fulcrum. The law of the lever states that a lever will maintain a static equilibrium if the magnitude of the torque created by the effort force and the magnitude of the torque created by the load force are equal. All simple machines produce mechanical advantage. Mechanical advantage refers to how much a simple machine multiplies an applied force. Sa mas madaling salita, gaano nila mas mapapadali yung trabaho. This formula only means that mechanical advantage is equal to the ratio of the effort to the load as well as to the distance from the effort to the fulcrum over the distance from the load to the fulcrum. So, paano natin malalaman na meron yung mechanical advantage? It happens when the distance from the effort to the fulcrum is greater than the distance from the load to the fulcrum. So, para mamove mo ang isang bagay with small effort, you need a long distance from the effort to the fulcrum and a short distance from the load to the fulcrum. So, mechanical advantage tells you how much the machine will multiply any force you put into it. So, this lever will multiply any force by 1 because the effort side is 2 meters and the load side is 2 meters. So, ibig sabihin ba mapapadali yung work? No, this machine only enable you to change the direction of the force you put into it. For example, naglalaro ng sisa si Erika and Shuri. Naglagay ng force si Erika, ang resulta, aangat si Shuri. Then kapag naglagay ng force si Shuri, aangat naman si Erika. Nagbabago lang yung direction ng force. What happens if we change the length of the input side or the effort with respect to the output side or the load? We will change the meters down to 1. The input side is the same, 2 meters, while the output side is 1 meter. The next step is to figure out the ideal mechanical advantage. Why ideal? Because ideal mechanical advantage deals with distances. We are not looking for the force so we are not going to use actual mechanical advantage. We will think that this is an ideal machine that exists with no friction. Let's compare the two sides, the input side and the output side. Ideal mechanical advantage is simply the ratio between input side and output side. So divide lang natin. 2 meters divided by 1 equals 2. So this lever will multiply any force you put into it by 2. For more detailed parts of the lever, here's the illustration. We have the beam, the fulcrum below, on one end we have the airport or the force of the airport also called as input side, on the other end we have the load or the force of the resistance also called as the output side. Then we have the distance from the airport to the fulcrum and the distance from the load to the fulcrum. There are three classes of lever. First up, the first class lever. The fulcrum of this lever is located between the load and the effort. So if the fulcrum is closer to the load, then less effort is needed to move the load to a shorter distance. If the fulcrum is closer to the effort, then more effort is needed to move the load to a greater distance. These are the 
examples of first class level. Scissors on the left, teeter totters on the middle, and crumpers on the right. First class levels are very useful for knitting large loads with little effort. How did scissor categorize as first class level? The fulcrum of the scissor is the pivot in the middle, and the force or the input is applied by the person using the scissor, and the item being cut has force applied or the output. In second class level, the fulcrum is not in the middle of the beam. The load is located between the effort and the fulcrum. Thus, if the load is closer to the fulcrum than the effort, then less effort will be required to move the load. If the load is closer to the effort than the fulcrum, then more effort will be required to move the load. These are the examples of second class level. Will borrows when going on tiptoes and when doing push-ups. How did wheelbarrows categorize a second class level? When you pick up the handle of the wheelbarrow and raise it, you're actually applying effort to the lever. The wheel starts rolling. Meanwhile, the axle will increase the force making it easier to push the load to carry heavier loads and move easily from one place to another. Lastly, the third class lever. In third class lever, the effort is located between the load and the pull chrome. So if the fulcrum is closer to the load, then less effort is needed to move the load. If the fulcrum is closer to the effort, then the load will move to a greater distance. These are the examples of third class lever. When swinging a tennis racket, staple removers, and when you lift objects using the muscles in your biceps. These levers are useful for making precise movements. How did staple remover categorize as third class lever? When using a staple remover, the force is applied in the middle between the load and the pull crew. The load is the item where you are removing the staple while the pull crew is in the other end. Let's now have the lever calculations. For first class lever, we provide this example to know the formulas needed to balance the lever. A first class lever in a static equilibrium has a 100 pounds of resistance force and a 22 pounds of effort force. The lever's effort force is 6 feet from the fulcrum. For first question, what is the actual mechanical advantage of the system? For the second question, what is the distance from the fulcrum to the resistance force? First, we need to make a first class lever illustration. We have the resistance, the effort, and in the middle, the fulcrum. We have the FR, which means the force of the resistance or output or the load. The FE, which means the force of the effort or the input. The DR, which means the distance of the resistance. The DE, which means the distance of the effort. First, we need to find the mechanical advantage. So, we need to use the formula of AMA, the actual mechanical advantage, equals to FR, the force of the resistance, divided by the FE, the force of the effort. So, we have 100 resistance force divided by 22 effort force. So, using the calculator, we get the 4.55 mechanical advantage. Next is to find the distance of the resistance. So, we need to have the formula of MR equals ME. MR is the moment of the resistance. ME is the moment of the effort. Since the problem said in a static equilibrium, so meaning, the moment of the resistance is equal to the moment of the effort. And if these are equal, this is perfectly balanced. But to get the MR, we need to multiply the force of the resistance to the distance of the resistance. To get the ME, we need to multiply the force of the effort to the distance of the effort. So distribute lang natin, we have 100 LBS multiply to DR. The 22 LBS multiplied to 6 feet. So 22 times 6 equals 132 LBS. 
So, using the algebra rules, we divide the both side. So, 132 divided by 100 LBS. So, cancels LBS, we have the TR of 1.32 feet. So, para daw magkaroon ng better mechanical advantage sa problem na to, dapat daw si fulcrum ay malapit dun sa resistance force. Dahil kung papansin natin, the given resistance force is 100 pounds while the effort force is 22 pounds. So, kung makikita nyo, mas maikli yung distance ni resistance to fulcrum kaysa sa 6 feet ni effort to fulcrum. Dahil the more force you have, the less distance you need. The less force you have, the more distance you need. So next is a second class lever. Let's solve this problem. A wheelbarrow is used to lift a 150 pounds load. The length from the wheel axle to the center of the load is 3 feet. The length from the wheel and axle to the effort is 7 feet. The questions are First, what is the ideal mechanical advantage of the system? Second, what is the minimum effort needed to lift the end of the wheelbarrow? So again, we need to provide first the illustration. We have the force of the resistance, 150 pounds, distance of the resistance, 3 feet, force of the effort, unknown, distance of the effort, 7 feet. We already tackled how to get the ideal mechanical advantage. We need to divide the distance of the effort or the input side to the distance of the resistance or the output side. Distribute lang natin, we have 7 feet of distance of the effort and 3 feet of distance of the resistance. 7 divided 3 is 2.33. So we have the ideal mechanical advantage of 2.33. For the next question, using static equilibrium calculations, we need to calculate the effort force needed to overcome the resistance force in the system. Again, in static equilibrium, the moment of the resistance should be equal to the moment of the effort. So let's write the same formula to get the MR equal to ME. So distribute lang natin yung mga given. FR is 150 LBS, DR is 3 feet, and DE is 7 feet. 150 multiplied to 3 equals 450 feet to LBS. And then we divide both sides, so 450 divided by 7, so we get the force of the effort of 64.29. So, kailangan natin ng 64.29 effort force para mabuhat natin yung end of the wheelbarrow or yung sa may gawing tabanan. So, by that, nag-equal na si distance and si force. Last is the third class lever. Let's solve this problem. A medical technician uses a pair of 4 inch long tweezers to remove a wood splinter from a patient. The technician is applying 2 pounds of squeezing force to the tweezers. If more than 1 pound of force is applied to the splinter, it will break and becomes difficult to remove. The questions are First, what is the actual mechanical advantage of the system? Second, how far from the fulcrum the tweezers must held to avoid damaging the splinter? So again, we provide first the illustration. So we have the force of the resistance, 1 fourth pounds, distance of the resistance of 4 inch, force of the effort of 2 pounds, and the distance of the effort is unknown. To find the actual mechanical advantage, again we need to use the formula of AMA equals to FR divided by FE. 
distribute lang ulit, we have the 1 fourth LBS divided by 2. To simplify, we need to multiply 1 fourth to the reciprocal of 2, which is 1 half. 1 fourth times 1 half is equals to 1 eighth. On 1 eighth, we get the decimal of 0 0.125. So we get the actual mechanical advantage of 1 over 8 if fraction and if decimal we get the 0 0.125. For the next question, we need to use again the formula of MR equals ME. So to get the MR again, we need to multiply the FR to the R. To get the ME, we need to multiply the FE to the E. Distribute lang natin ulit. We have the 1 fourth LBS. Multiply to 4 inch. And 2 LBS to the E. To multiply 1 fourth to 4, we need to multiply the numerator to the whole number. 1 times 4 equals 4. And then we need to divide 4 to 4. 4 divided by 4 equals 1. So we have 1 inch to LBS. Same process, we divide 2 LBS both sides. And then we get the distance of the effort of 1 half. So we get the half an inch of distance of the effort. So in tweezers, the effort should be close to the fulcrum so that the splinter will not break and can be easily removed.